Hi, my name is Bernie and I'm going to be doing my SVN competency. So today, prior to entering into the patient's room, I will be checking the patient's past medical history record. This is to help me find any information that will help me with my encounter with the patient today. From the records, it does say that my patient does have a history of asthma. And I would also be checking for any PPE requirements that are needed for today. And then as well as checking the physician's orders. So from the physician's orders, it says that we'll be administering a dose of duoneb. Within duoneb, there is 0.5 milligrams of ipratropium bromide and 2.5 milligrams of albuterol. We're gonna deliver that to the patient through a small volume nebulizer that is set at six liters per minute with the medical grade oxygen from the wall that is gonna be set at 50 PSI. And this medication is as needed for the patient. So I'm gonna start by sanitizing my hands and gathering my materials. So I will be needing a piece of paper. I'm just gonna rip off a piece of this napkin and use it as a sheet of paper. It is also blank on both sides. A pencil, my medication, some sterile water, and a napkin also to, for the patient to cough in, some gloves, stethoscope, pulse ox, small volume nebulizer, my peak flow meter, a calculator, and some alcohol pads. I'm gonna use some to, stare, er, to clean my stethoscope. So I'm gonna sanitize my hands again before entering into the patient's room. I also checked if there was any PPE requirements and there are none needed for today. So I'm gonna enter into my patient's room. Hi, my name is Bernie. I'm from the respiratory department. Can I get your name and your date of birth, please? Yes, Julie Juarez, 62188. Okay, so at this time I'll check her medical band just to make sure it's the correct information. And it is. So today, Julie, we're going to be um, taking your vitals and listening to your lungs because in your charts, it does say that you do have a history of asthma. So we're going to see if you need the Duoneb um, administered to you that the doctor prescribed to you for your asthma. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the administration of the medication will take about 10 minutes through the small volume nebulizer. And it's going to be given through the small volume nebulizer at six liters per minute with the help of medical grade oxygen from the wall that is set at 50 PSI, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so since I gained the patient's consent, I will sanitize my hands one more time and place my gloves on to proceed. Place my pulse socks on my patient's finger. Wrap around this one. And I'm also gonna take her pulse for 30 seconds and her respiration for 30 seconds. Okay. So for her pulse, I got it at 35 um, beats per minute for 30 seconds. I'm gonna multiply that by two and I'll get 70. Pulse is 70. And her respiration, I got at seven for 30, sec for 30 seconds. I'm gonna multiply that by two to get for the full minute. So it'll be 14. And her O2 on the pulse ox is 98. Okay. So at this moment, I will also check the patient's skin to see if there's any discoloration, if there's any cyanosis in her fingers or anything. I'll just take this and put this in my pocket for now. Okay. So 
from her skin is cool. It's warm. No, not cool. It's actually warm to touch. And her digits are fine. There's no sign of cyanosis. And then I'm also going to check up here. Does this hurt by any chance? Mm -mm. No? Okay. And there's also the coloration up here. So are you having any hard time, any trouble breathing, I mean? No. No? Okay. So on a scale of 1 to 10, would it be 0 that you're breathing fine or 10 that you're having a hard time? Uh, 0. 0? Okay. So there's no sign of dyspnea and she even mentioned that she's okay. So no dyspnea. And then I'm also going to make note of her coloration of her skin. So from here, I'm also going to listen to your lungs. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to have you actually sit on the edge of the bed for me. Do you need help? No. Thank you. So from here, I'm going to listen to your lungs. I'm going to do eight to ten spots onto your back, two on each side, and then also eight to ten on the front, and then one more on your neck just to make sure that none of the wheezing is coming from here or that you have strength. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if for any reason you need to take a break because you're starting to feel lightheaded or uncomfortable, just let me know and we can do so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I'm also going to warm my stethoscope by placing the bell in my hand. Okay. Okay, so when I place my stethoscope on you, I'm going to need you to take a deep breath in for me, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. How are you feeling? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do the sides now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. And I'm going to compare to this side. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go up a little bit. Go ahead. Okay. And then I'm going to go up right here. Go ahead. All right. How are you feeling? Okay. Okay, no, no lightheadedness or anything? No. Okay. So in the back, I did hear some wheezing at the bases. I'm gonna also double check and confirm it in the front as well if I hear it, okay? Mm -hmm. And if, it, if you need to take a break, just let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna go underneath the patient's gown again to keep the patient, just so that the patient can have some privacy as well. Okay. Okay, go ahead. by the clavicle. Go ahead. One more. Okay, and then the last is your neck. Go ahead. Okay, so your throat is clear, no sign of strider, but I also did hear the wheezing in the front and the base as well. So we will give you the duonet with, to help with that. So right now your bronchioles, they're constricted, so it's gonna look like this, and that's why I hear the wheezing. What the bronchodilator is going to do is going to open it up so that your air can flow through without having a hard time getting through creating that wheezing noise, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So also before we do that, let me just make a note of your breath sound. Wheezing at bases. Okay. Also, I'm going to have you use your peak flow meter. So from this, we're going to base your... Um, goal on your age and your height and the fact that you're a female. So yours is going to be at 
390. What I'm going to have you do is inhale a big breath in. And then force that breath out. Go. And we're going to do that three times, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're going to take your breath. So go ahead and do your first attempt. So I got 200. Okay, go ahead and go one more time. Oh, sorry. Okay. I got 215. Go ahead and try one more time. Okay. And I got 220 for this one. And then we would also have you create a seal around the mouthpiece. I know I didn't tell you that, but you kind of get the gist of it. You put your lips around with your teeth as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Where did I say what the last one was again? Seal number? Uh, 215. 215, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put the 215 and divide that by the 390, and then multiply that by 100. Let's do that real quick. 215 divided by 390, 100, 200. Okay. So your lungs are working at a 55%. So your lungs are not really doing the best right now. That is in the red zone. So it would benefit from the albuterol, or not the albuterol, well, it has albuterol, but the duonet. So it'll help make the air move easier in your lungs. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm gonna have you go ahead and sit back into the bed in a semi-fowler's position with your head being at least 30 degrees up, which it is. You doing okay though? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna set up your small volume nebulizer for you. I am going to take the nebulizer part and put the medication inside of it. And I'll also set up the other pieces. We're gonna use a mouthpiece that I'm going to connect. I'm gonna attach the T-tube and the mouthpiece. So we're gonna use the mouthpiece because the patient is coordinated enough to at least hold the mouthpiece, the nebulizer up to her mouth and take the breaths in. I'm also gonna attach the reservoir. And then if the patient didn't have the coordination to be able to hold this, we would use an aerosol mask that we would just put onto the patient and little to no effort, no effort actually, would be needed for that. So I'm gonna attach this and then attach the tubing. Okay. So when using the, the small volume nebulizer, I'm gonna have you create a tight seal with your teeth and lips surrounding the mouthpiece. And then you're gonna be breathing in normally. And then periodically, I'm gonna have you take a deep breath in to get the medication deep down into the bases where I heard the wheezing and just breathe out and then continue to breathe normally with the um, deep breaths every once in a while, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go ahead and set this up for you. So I'm gonna hook this up to the wall with the medical grade air that is set at 50 PSI. And then I am going to also turn it on to six liters per minute. Okay. So I'm gonna set to six liters per minute. And I'm gonna see if I feel any of the air coming out from the front and where the mouthpiece is, and I do. And then at this point, I would also see when the aerosol would start forming and coming out from the reservoir and the mouthpiece as well. So there might be also some side effects that you might feel from this. You might start to feel like your heart is racing and you might get dry mouth from this as well, okay? Mm -hmm. And then also I'm gonna be monitoring you to make sure you don't have any hyper or hypoventilation. Mm -hmm. And if you do start feeling it, then let me know, but I'll be monitoring you if you feel any of those side effects as well. Let me know, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have you do hold this mm -hmm. since the aerosol is starting to come out. Okay, so go ahead and do your breathing. Good. And then we would do this for about 10 minutes. 
And then when I start to see that the med medication is starting to run out or I start hearing the medication inside start to spew or spurt out or around the chamber, I would then take this, just have it close to her so she could still get the medication and just tap it so that it would move around. And then also, once it's all finished, I would take the small volume nebulizer. How do you feel? Okay, okay, okay. So I would turn the, the source off. Now I disconnect it. So I'm gonna let the medication settle into your lungs and have you rest for a little bit so it could actually work and I'm gonna clean out your small volume nebulizer, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would disconnect the tubing And then also prior to setting up the small volume nebulizer, I would also label the small volume nebulizer with the patient's initials, both on the T piece and on the actual uh, small volume nebulizer, just so that the patient will have her own and she's not sharing with anyone. And then also the date will help us to make sure that we do replace it when needed, like if it gets dirty or based on the care that the manufacturers want, or if it's at, towards like the week span, the end of the week. So we just discontinue or disconnect all of these pieces, put it back into the bag that has the patient's name on there. And then from here, I would also clean my little nebulizer. So I would leave the cap on for now. I would use sterile water and then just pour it in. Or actually, I would just dump everything out first. And then I would pour the sterile water in and then I would shake it up a little bit just so that I get everything and then dump it out again. I would remove the top and then use the air again to also dry it if I wanted to, making sure that I don't touch it on the inside. And also so that when I put it back into the bag, it's not dripping wet and making everything else wet as well. So I'll put all that in there. And that's for the patient. Okay, so how did you, are you able to breathe okay? Mm -hmm. Do you still feel like you're wheezing a little bit down in the bases? No. no. Okay, so from here I'm gonna take your vitals again, so your respiration, your SpO2, and check your pulse, and I'm gonna also listen to your lungs again, and we're gonna do your peak flow meter again, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So from here I'm gonna, again, put the pulse ox onto my patient's finger. Can I place this on you, please? Thank you. I'm gonna also check the patient's pulse. I'm gonna do this for 30 seconds and then do the respirations for 30 seconds. Okay, so for the pulse, I got 45. So 45 for 30 seconds, I'm gonna multiply that by two and I do get 90, let me write this down, pulse is 90 beats per minute, which is okay, which the, her starting pulse was 70, so that's normal with the administration, the administer of the medication since it does make the heart go a little bit, fa a little bit faster. And then I'm also going to check the patient's um, O2 on here, it's 98. O2 is 98. And then her respirations, they were again, they were eight for 30 seconds. I'm gonna multiply that by two and I get 16. And then I'm gonna actually have you cough into this napkin for me, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay, so it was a productive cough and there was no sputum. If there was, we would document for Color, odor, consistency, yeah, consistency, and amount. So since there's none, we won't need to worry about that. And then, are you feeling any, um, are you actually having any, hold on a minute. Are you actually having a hard time breathing right now, or you're okay? No, I'm fine. Okay, so, so from zero to 10, zero being you're fine, 10 you can't breathe, where are you at between the scale? Zero. Zero, okay, so I'm gonna also again, Write down zero dyspnea. Um, also check her skin one more time. So her skin again is cool to touch. No, no sign of cyanosis again or anything or discoloration. 
Okay, I'm also gonna check up here. Everything seems fine. No pain or anything when I was pressing no. down? Okay, so no discoloration. Okay, so from here I'm gonna actually have you swing around and sit at the edge of the bed again. Mm -hmm. Do you need help or you got this? Yeah. Thank you. So from here we're gonna listen to your lungs one more time. Again, from eight to 10 in the back, eight to 10 in the front, two on each side and then one on the neck again, okay? Mm -hmm. And then after that we're gonna do the peak meter flow again, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you need to take a break for any reason or at any time from the lightheadedness, from all the blowing, then just let me know, okay? Okay, so I'm going to start in the back for consultation, warming up my stethoscope. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom. Every time you feel my stethoscope touch your back, go ahead and take a deep breath in for me and out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth, okay? How are you feeling? Good, good. Okay, I'm gonna check your sides now. Okay. Now I'm gonna compare it to the other side. Okay, go ahead. And I'm gonna compare it to the other side again. Go ahead. Okay. So it is clear from the back, which is good. I'm gonna make sure that I don't hear any of the wheezing again in the front, okay? Mm -hmm. Still doing okay, no lightheadedness? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go again underneath the patient's gown for privacy. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Two more of the aphases. Okay. okay. And the last one on the neck. Go ahead. Okay. So your lungs are clear. I do not hear the wheezing anymore, which is good. So this is a sign that the donut did work for you, okay? So now we're gonna do your peak flow meter again. Remember that your goal that we saw earlier was at 390. We're gonna do your three attempts again. Okay, remember how to do this? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Go ahead, whenever you're ready. Okay, so we are at 305. We got 315, which is really good. And then the last one, last one. Okay. okay. We got 315 again. Okay. So it's gonna to calculate if the medication worked for you. We are going to do the post minus pre over pre. Okay. So it's gonna be your best, which is 315. Minus, what was your best on this side again? 215. Over 215. And then we're gonna multiply that by 100 as well. 215 minus 215 equals divided by 215 times 100. 
Okay. So the improvement was about 46-47%, which is really good. So the doing that did help your lungs a lot. So that is very good. Now you're able to breathe a lot easier. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then do you need me to help you back into bed by any chance? No. No? Okay. Okay, so did you have any questions about what we did today by any chance? No. No? Okay. Did you need help with anything else? No. No? Okay. So from what we did today, I'm going to make note of it into your charts and talk to your nurse and your doctor about what we did today and what and how everything went. I'm going to also fill out a flow sheet about all the things that we did so that it would stay in your record in a nice file, okay? Mm hmm All right. So from here, I would take my gloves off sanitize my hands. I would also put all the patient stuff together so that next time that she had to use it all, it would be easy to find. And then I would take my information, sanitize my hands again, thank the patient one more time. Okay, thank you so much for letting me do this assessment on you and administer your medication. And then I would, and then from here, I would exit the room and then also sterilize, I mean not sterilize, clean my stethoscope. And then also clean my pulse ox. Place it back in my pocket and then sterilize or sanitize my hand. But I would also, but what I also forgot to do in my patient's room, I'm gonna re-enter again. Hi. Hi. So I forgot to leave you your call light. So I'm gonna place this right here for you just in case you need anything else, okay? okay thank you. Don't be afraid to call. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then here I would sanitize my hands again and then exit the room.